we are starting with a new chapter that is molecular basis of inheritance this is the second chapter in the unit of genetics and evolution we have already done the first chapter that is uh, the basic principles of mendel in uh, the inheritance of uh, genes and this is the second one that is molecular basis of inheritance in this chapter we will be talking about the DNA molecule its structure various types of DNAs the types of RNAs and then we will see why DNA is considered as the genetic material all the experiments done by various scientists which proved that DNA is the genetic material. We will also talk about DNA replication, that is transcription and translation after that. We will also discuss operons in this particular chapter. So let us first start with which molecule can be termed as genetic material. We can write it as characteristics of genetic material, characteristics of genetic material. Which material can be considered as genetic material? Which properties should it exhibit? First property that should be exhibited by the genetic material or that material which can be termed as genetic material is that it should be able to replicate. And why should it be able to replicate? As we said that the genetic material is the one which is getting inherited from the parents to the offspring. So when the cells divide, then this genetic material should be able to replicate. Second, characteristics, uh, ca second, second characteristic should be that it should show stable mutations. It should show stable mutations and these mutations should be inheritable and mutations should be inheritable. Mutations take place in the genetic material and these mutations would result in the formation of a different type of proteins. Most of the times the mutations are harmful but the useful mutations help in evolution. So unless or until the genetic material shows some kind of mutations which are stable and get inherited, then those mutations will not be significant in uh, evolution process. So it should be stable mutation and it should be inheritable. Third, it should be able to translate its information into the working form. That means if we know that DNA is the genetic material, is it able to translate the code which it has to synthesize a protein? That is what is meant by the third characteristic that the genetic material should be able to translate the information by transcription. We already know these uh, processes and that's why we, it is easier for us to understand that DNA when it gets transcribed we get mRNA synthesized. This mRNA then helps in protein formation and these are the proteins which are actually performing all the various activities. So these are the three characteristics which must be shown by any molecule which can be considered as a genetic material. Let us go back to certain historical points about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, we know that there are two types of nucleic acids. One is DNA, that is deoxyribonucleic acid. And second is RNA, that is ribonucleic acid. Important thing, nucleic acids were 
observed or discovered by by Frederick Michel. Frederick Michel in 1869 and he observed these material or this material in pus cells. He called this material which he observed in the pus cell as nucleic. Nucleic acid term was given later on. So he called it nucleic. Later on, Altman named this nucleic as nucleic acid. So term nucleic acid was given by Altman in 1889. So when it was discovered, it was called nucleic and it was observed from the pus cells. He called it nucleic, that is Frederick Michel who discovered this material. He found this material in the form of acidic DNA. So he called it nucleic and that was DNA which was an acidic substance. So he reported an acidic substance in the pus cells. The term nucleic acid was given much later by another scientist that is Altman. And we know that there are two DNA, or sorry, two types of nucleic acids. DNA is present in nucleus of eukaryotic cells and in certain organelles of eukaryotic cells, that is in plastids and mitochondria. Whereas in case of prokaryotes, it is present in simple cytoplasmic content because prokaryotes do not have any membrane bound structure. So it can be nucleus or cytoplasm or certain organelles like plastids and mitochondria. RNAs, they are responsible for protein synthesis. So they help in protein synthesis in cytoplasm. DNA is normally the material that we are talking of, the genetic material which is helping in inheritance of characters. And RNA, the other nucleic acid, is responsible for protein synthesis. So now let us talk about what these nucleic acids are made up of.